want you to hit me as hard as you can. H.P. Lovecraft is one of the most famous and celebrated horror writers of all time. His stories about unknowable eldritch horrors and non-Euclidean structures influenced everyone from Stephen King to Hellboy's Mike Mignola, manga artist Junji Ito, painter H.R. Giga, even to filmmakers like Sam Raimi, John Carpenter, and Stuart Gordon. In fact, Lovecraft's cosmic horror concepts and creatures are seen everywhere in pop culture these days, from movies like Color Out of Space, TV shows such as the recent Lovecraft Country, and countless comics, video games, and tabletop RPGs such as the famous The Call of Cthulhu. His work has gotten so ubiquitous in recent years that his most famous monstrous creation, The Great Cthulhu, has been mass-marketed as a cute stuffed plushie as well as a CG animated kids cartoon starring the aforementioned creature and a young Lovecraft himself. Now, while there have been a surprising number of Lovecraft film adaptations, starting as early as Roger Corman's 1963 The Haunted Palace, starring Vincent Price, which was very loosely based on Lovecraft's The Case of Charles Dexter Ward, very few films, if any, were direct adaptations of the author's work. Hell, the most famous and successful of the bunch, Stuart Gordon's 1985 splatter flick Reanimator, barely resembles the story it bears its name to at all, besides some basic plot points. Even the aforementioned Lovecraft Country is more of a subversion of Lovecraft's tropes, especially as it deals directly with his famous and unfortunate virulent racism, which was notable even for his time. This other issue with adapting Lovecraft into a visual medium, besides the obvious datedness of his story's themes, is the fact that most of Lovecraft's work is about the horror of the unknowable or indescribable, which makes adapting them into a visual medium such as film that much more difficult. Which is also why films adapted from Lovecraft usually only take key concepts from him and then do their own thing with them, such as the 2007's Cthulhu making an LGBTQ allegory from the story The Shadow Over Innsmouth. But this was a challenge that popular Mexican genre director Guillermo del Toro was willing to tackle. At one point in the late 2000s, del Toro was set to direct a big budget, R-rated adaptation of H.P. Lovecraft's novella at the Mountains of Madness, to be produced by his friend and fellow genre filmmaker James Cameron, who knew a thing or two about big budget R-rated horror films. And starring none other than Tom Cruise, who was near the peak of his star power at the time. Lovecraft is a master in literature, he's a master of the ambiguous. But, but film is by definition specific. Film is a specificity in itself. And that's why our minds are normally resistant to somebody adapting a book we have lived with for a long time. So then, with all that in place, what went wrong? How come the movie didn't end up happening? That's what we'll be discussing in this episode of Movie That Almost Was. Now, around the mid to late 2000s, Guillermo del Toro was arguably most known for his dark Spanish-language fantasy film Pan's Labyrinth and the two original Hellboy films. And while those films had some critical, and even some commercial success, none were what you would call big blockbusters. Before that, Del Toro had written and directed some critically acclaimed Mexican films, Kronos and The Devil's Backbone, the fun but lesser known American creature feature, Mimic, as well as the great superhero sequel, Blade II. After the international box office success of Pan's Labyrinth in 2006, Del Toro attempted to parlay that film's cultural cachet into getting a big budget at the Mountains of Madness film off the ground. He then wrote a script for the film with veteran screenwriter Matthew Robbins. Del Toro then pitched the idea to Warner Brothers, who had distributed Pan's Labyrinth in North America. Unfortunately, Warner's balked at the $150 million price tag, the dark, nihilistic story, and the R rating, which wouldn't be the last time that Del Toro met that kind of result. Resistance. So, Del Toro moved on, directing Hellboy 2 The Golden Army in 2008 for Universal, and was at one point in talks to direct the Halo video game feature film adaptation with producer and Lord of the Rings director Peter Jackson. 
Jackson then convinced Del Toro to take on directing duties for the ill-fated Hobbit films, which at that point was simply a duology for Warner Brothers and MGM in 2008. However, that project eventually fell apart after a variety of delays, and Del Toro ended up leaving the project around 2010. Del Toro then refocused his attention on his dream project from years prior, the big-budget adaptation of At the Mountains of Madness, which was now set up at Universal Studios, who he had worked closely with on his last completed film up to that point, Hellboy 2. Then, in 2010, it was announced that Del Toro was going to be getting some help from his filmmaker friend James Cameron, hot off the success of Avatar, which became the top grossing movie of all time, beating his own Titanic, which itself wasn't beaten until a decade later with Avengers Endgame. It was even reported that Cameron was putting up some of his own personal money into the At the Mountains of Madness project, which was still estimated to be upwards of $150 million. This was unprecedented for a horror film, especially one as dark and nihilistic as this one. And while the industry is still hesitant to make big budget R-rated tentpoles even today, it was practically unheard of 10 years ago. However, to help stack the deck in their favor, even though the studio was eyeing James McAvoy for the lead role, Del Toro and Cameron got superstar Tom Cruise on board to star in the film as the ill-fated protagonist, explorer-slash-geologist William Dyer, who seemed excited to work on a project with Del Toro. Moving forward, Del Toro, Cameron, and their team worked tirelessly on concept art, maquettes, and CGI previous sequences to solve the problems inherent in adapting Lovecraft, as well as making a pitch to impress Universal executives and get Get that coveted green light for the movie. So what would have Del Toro's At the Mountains of Madness be like? Well, according to a draft of the script written by him and Matthew Robbins, it was actually very close to the original story, and most of the changes were additions to make it feature length, such as expanding the cast of characters that would become bloody victims during the course of the film, including a role specifically written for Del Toro mainstay Ron Pillman, who first worked with Del Toro on Blade 2 and then as Hellboy. The script, like the H.P. Lovecraft story, is about a geologist named William Dyer, to be played by Tom Cruise, who is found locked in a ship full of dead bodies, discovered on the shore of Australia, bearded, malnourished, and crazy. Turns out Dyer had went on a disastrous expedition to Antarctica, with the rest of the film being a flashback. He is also given a pregnant wife and child he has to begrudgingly leave behind, another addition to the script to add layers to the main character, who in the book, as with most Lovecraft protagonists, was a blank slate, whose interiority was less important than his clinical, then deranged, reactions to the strangeness going on around him. The rest of the film details that voyage, where they discover large, mutated, and murderous penguins, thing-like shapeshifting horrors called Shoggoths, and Dyer and his fellow explorers discovering that the old gods had created all life on Earth and are now going to use their advanced and ancient technology to wipe us all out. The film even ended with none other than Cthulhu itself rising out of the snow to try and catch them. Imagine that scene with top-of-the-line, state-of-the-art special effects and Del Toro's deft creature designs. Sounds cool, right? So, again, what happened? How could a slam dunk like this, with a director, producer, and star all at the top of their game, not get made? It's madness! No pun intended. Well, it has to do with what usually destroys great projects. The ice-cold pragmatism and cowardice of market-based capitalism and the commodification of art. Or, put more simply, the budget was too big. Specifically, it was too big for a dark, nihilistic, and gory R-rated horror film that didn't come from a known property, as no Lovecraft film had made much money in the past, and also from a director who had only had one film crack $100 million, Hellboy 2 The Golden Army, which even then still only made slightly over the projected budget of At the Mountains of Madness at $160 million. And while James Cameron was king shit after the success of Avatar, unlike Del Toro's At the Mountains of Madness, at least still fit the formulaic milieu of popular PG-13 action films of the time. This meant Del Toro's At the Mountains of Madness film didn't fit the PG-13 rated blockbuster mold, nor did it fit the low-budget R-rated horror mold either, so Universal ultimately passed and pulled the plug on the project due to the cost, the rating, and the overly dark tone, same as Warner Brothers five years prior. However, one of the biggest blows to the film getting made, surprisingly, was Ridley Scott's Prometheus. While ostensibly an alien film, which always had some Lovecraftian elements, the writer Dan O'Bannon and artist H.R. Giger were both inspired by Lovecraft, the plot of this particular alien film was about creation and godlike creatures, which touched on a lot of the same themes that Del Toro's film was going to, killing his momentum to try again with another
another studio. Here's what Del Toro wrote on the now lost forums of his official fan site. Prometheus started filming a while ago, right at the time we were in pre-production. The title itself gave me pause, knowing that Alien was heavily influenced by Lovecraft and his novella. This time, decades later, with the budget and place Ridley Scott occupied, I assumed the Greek metaphor alluded at the creation aspects of the HPL book. I believe I am right, and if so, as a fan, I am delighted to see a new Ridley Scott science fiction film, but this will probably mark a long pause, if not the demise, of At the Mountains of Madness. The sad part is, I have been pursuing At the Mountains of Madness for over a decade now, and well, after Hellboy 2, two projects I dearly loved were not brought to fruition for me. The good part is, one project did, and I am loving it and grateful for the blessings I have received. So, sadly, that seemed to be the end of Del Toro's journey to the Mountains of Madness, but afterward, the director found huge success, including an Oscar win for Best Original Screenplay, Best Director, and Best Film for Shape of Water, which, rather than a direct adaptation of Lovecraft like At the Mountains of Madness, was to be, instead, like the aforementioned Lovecraft Country, a refutation of Lovecraft's racist themes, even down to the use of merpeople, a staple of Lovecraft's writing, such as in The Shadow of Innsmouth, where in Del Toro's falling in love with the other is framed as a good thing, rather than being about the dangers of interracial breeding as it was in the original text. But that being said, even with all that success, apparently Del Toro hasn't given up on the At the Mountains of Madness film. In fact, in recent interviews he said he'd like to eventually make it before he dies. Though when he'll find time with all the projects he continuously racks up, only time will tell. So what do you guys think? Would you like to have seen Del Toro's At the Mountains of Madness starring Tom Cruise? Either way, let us know. And if you have a suggestion for us, please leave them in the comments below.